As with all installers, please confirm that you have met all of the system and Windows privilege requirements prior to attempting the installation. This information can be found in our release notes on the support portal and on the opening page of the Spotlight Enterprise Installer. Once you have downloaded our installer, right-click the executable and select Run as Administrator. You must be an administrator to install the application correctly, and this is the best procedure to accomplish a successful installation. The launcher will open up to a welcome screen and allow you to pick the installation type that you prefer. The selections are typical and compact. You also have access to our deployment guide, the release notes, a sizing wizard that can be used to show how to best deploy the diagnostic server and the playback database in your environment, New for version 11 is a link to this video so that you have an opportunity to see this before taking any steps towards the installation. Moving forward with the installation, your choices are typical and compact. If you are going to do a remote installation of the diagnostic server, then the typical installation is recommended. The compact installer selection is designed to just install to the local machine. We also offer a separate client-only MSI installer that will not have the selection for the diagnostic server installation. This was designed for use in installing the client for end users that need access to the Spotlight screens, while not allowing a new diagnostic server installation, which could damage an existing diagnostic server that has already been set up in your environment. Both the typical and the custom installation will pre-select the client and diagnostic server installations, but either one can be unchecked and you will be allowed to go back and complete the other once this has been completed. Once you pick your preferred installation type, the wizard will take you to the license agreement page where you're required to read and accept this agreement to enable the next button, which will allow you to proceed to the install location tab. We will be installing the diagnostic server on this computer for this exercise. Select Next to continue the installation. By default, the installation destination folder will be under C, Program Files, Dell, Diagnostic Server if you are on a 64-bit machine. On a 32-bit machine, you would be in the Program Files x86. Once the Next button has been selected, it will take you to a screen to select a domain user account for the diagnostic server user account to use for the installed service, or you can select to use the local system account. This user will start the service, which will be used to manage the collection we use to populate the GUI and the repositories. The domain, user, and password are required here in order to proceed. This is where you would be able to enter a user that you may have created already to use as the administrator user for the service and application. This user will be automatically added to the Diagnostic Administrator group, and you can add others that need to use the application but are not running the service to this now, or add them later via the Windows user groups. For this exercise, we'll just use the local system account and select Next. As you can see here, the user I'm logged in as is being added to the administrator, the user, and the read-only groups. This is where you're able to add and remove any users at this time. Click Next to proceed. This screen allows you to select to take advantage of our auto update feature where you will be automatically updating the service to provide you with any changes to any functionality now instead of the waiting period for a next release. This option can be added later or unchecked in the Spotlight options at any time if you change your mind on the preference you choose at this point in the installation. The next screen in the installation process is where we need to configure the playback database. All diagnostic servers are required to have a playback database to store the information that we capture for you to play back at a later time. You will need to choose an instance, decide whether you want to use Windows authentication, SQL Server authentication, and need to create the database with this user. The default naming convention is Spotlight Playback Database. Once you've entered the instance name and chosen the authentication method, 
select Create. The next page for the playback database creation allows you to select the user for this again and configure where you want the playback data and log files to reside. Select Create at this time. The install will indicate whether you are successful or if there is a problem. You can validate that this has been created by going to SQL Server Management Studio, doing a refresh, and noticing that the Spotlight Playback Database has appeared. Going back to the Installer dialog, now that you've created it, go ahead and select Next. This will bring you to a Spotlight Client Installation Folder Verification page. By default, it's going to go to Program Files, Dell, Spotlight on SQL Server. Select Next to proceed. Next will be a validation page that shows the preferences that you have selected, and you'll allow it to go back and edit these if they are not correct, or simply select Start to initialize the installation. When the installation has been completed, it will bring you to a Finish screen where the default is to select to launch Spotlight. As you can see here, we have a notification that we need Microsoft Report Viewer 2010. This is to use our Spotlight reports. It also includes a link to the Report Viewer for easy access and installation on your end. Now you have successfully installed the diagnostic server, the Spotlight client, and created the playback repository. The next step is for you to create your SQL Server and Windows connections and let Spotlight help you diagnose and manage your environment.